how many quarterbacks are you taking ahead of Jalen Hurts in Dynasty right now? Superflex? Superflex? Or, yeah, Superflex, right? No, no, just in general, how many quarterbacks are you taking ahead of Jalen Hurts? I don't think it matters whether it's Superflex or not, just how many quarterbacks yeah. you're taking. Well, I'm probably not going to get any of those top quarterbacks in a non-Superflex, you know what I mean? So I'm like, so Superflex, just, you'll get an honest answer in Superflex. Where would, you, I'm like ra- where, would you, where would you rank Jalen Hurts in your quarterback dynasty landscape? I'm not talking about where you'd have, where you'd pick, where you're picking. Where uh, Superflex? would you rank them? Oh I'd, my I'd, God. I'd probably, where would you? I'd, I'd probably put him... He's got a, he's top five, right? He's definitely ahead of Kyler at this point. Oh yeah, I don't really want anything to do with Kyler. Tyler's a DJ Moore of quarterbacks. <laughs> I mean, I think that's a bit of, I think that's a bit aggressive. I'd, that's some eight right I'd there. I'd probably have him around, you know, four or five. Yeah, he's right there with he's right there with Jackson for me. I gotta take Lamar Jackson, I think, right? I'm taking Sure. I, I, yeah, I'm I'm not judging Kind of, kind of where you'd have him. I, I think if generally, if he's in somewhere in the top five, I think that's probably yeah, re- reasonable, yeah. right? Yeah, for John sure. Michael, the, are you judging me? <laughs> no, I'm not judging you. I'm not judging you. The I think the thing that's judging most me. interesting with with Jalen Hurts <laughs> judging me, judging you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, the the thing that I find most interesting with Jalen Hurts though is how he's come out. Like gangbusters, obviously, I would like to think that obviously he's exceeded expectations to this point. People were talking about him being an MVP candidate. People are talking about the Eagles being one of the best teams in the NFC. And he's no longer someone who's simply buoyed by the rushing, even though he's running the ball a crap ton. It's not just about that. He's now making plays in the passing game. Obviously, A.J. Brown's a great addition. Devonta Smith, what can we say? He's... <laughs> awesome uh dallas goddard coming into his own and and what i really like is that they've narrowed the target tree to those guys right we've got sanders catching some balls but we don't have a lot of the random quiz watkins seven target games and any of that randomness that we would see last season. r.i.p travis fulgham <laughs> shout out to travis fulgham uh, that was a nice cup of coffee for him that he had <laughs> The, Nick Sirianni so, does care about our fantasy football teams. <laughs> and, and and now I think the, the most encouraging piece and why I feel like at this point I am not just all in on Jalen Hurts, but it's okay, blank check. What 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 do you want to give in terms of fantasy? Is because they have they have all those picks, right? That that they want to try to get crazy with next year. He's now proving like he's kind of the guy. They don't have to worry about trying to yeah, go early sure. on quarterback now. And so I think that was the – well, there were two things that you were really worried about. Are the Eagles going to pivot away from him? And is his passing ever going to come around? He's proved after the first five weeks passing's not an issue anymore. Their volume of passing has actually increased, and even though he's still running the ball a lot. I, I, re- I really like Jalen Hurts, and I really want – I want him on each and every single one of my teams. Um, but, but I'm curious what your all thoughts are. Are you as effusive in praise? Are you as excited as I am? Uh, where do you guys stand when it comes to Jalen Hurts and his future prospects? I mean, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. Like, I've, I've thrown some shade at Jalen Hurts in the past. I, I didn't necessarily like him coming out. I thought it was a silly pick by the Eagles. Completely wrong about all of that. And then I could cop out at least being like, well, I don't know if he's going to be the long-term answer in Philly. But, I mean, I don't have that question anymore at all. I don't think – he's the fucking long-term answer in Philadelphia. Like, they don't need to take a quarterback next year. And, and like you said, it's not just the rushing. He can throw it. And they they did a great job putting pieces around him. And he's done nothing but knock it out of the fucking park. And they are one of the best teams, not only in the NFC East, but in the entire fucking NFL right now. I don't want to play the fu- – Phillies or Eagles? I don't want to play them, you know? Like, I don't want I don't to run through that bus stop, so – I don't think there's any questions about him being the long-term answer, and that's why he's definitely vaulted up into the top five-ish range of quarterbacks in Dynasty for sure. J. Mike, do you remember? Were you were you on that night when when um uh, on the dummies pod on the dummies on the draft two night when remember how mad Shane Manila was after the Eagles <laughs> drafted him? He was talking about driving to Howie Roseman's house, and I wonder how Sh- I wonder how Shane feels about Jalen Hurts right now. He probably likes him a whole lot, I'd say. No Eagles fans like any Eagles players, right? They're just all... Well, they probably like him right now. They probably love him right now. They're probably ready to name their dog Jalen. So so let me ask this. And, and, and Casey, then, then I, I'd love to hear you go in as well. Are, are we... It's Obviously, he put on paper what he did last season, so they still... The echo chamber that we operate in, that we talked that you referenced earlier... 
we, we talk about, okay, Eagles got these picks. They're loading up. If Hurts fails, do we want to see Gardner Minshew? Do we want to see Shuval back in effect and all these other things? But are, are we, after five weeks, are, are, are Jay Wayne and I being way too over our skis here with the excitement that, that we're having? <laughs> I don't – I don't necessarily think so. I think that that you that there is still a chance that this does could certainly get a little sideways for chunks of the of the season here, and things can turn really quickly in that city. And it seemed like you know Jay Wayne was saying how he was he was out on Hertz, and I was mostly out on Hertz too. The running quarterback, I'm always going to be into. It was more long term and the Eagles were essentially telling you that they didn't want Jalen Hurts long term. So was process over results, I don't know. Um but these are results over process right I, here. I'm, I'm just fucking around. Yeah. Um usually it works out, but I gotta But you, you know you have probably seen the most of Jalen Hurts because your wife demands watching the Eagles game every week. So Yeah, no, I mean I, I think he's Bang Bang Bird Gang. I think he's playing really well, but I you know it's we do this like you said, we do get really uh, everything solved and, and he's fine. And that you get into those recency bias, baby. You get into those bigger spots, a little higher pressure. You know, not that they didn't get challenged this week in, in Arizona, but, you know, this is a big one coming up here with Dallas. This will tell it all. This is um, the biggest game in the NFL history Dallas versus Philadelphia. You know, a, as we move forward in this season, we'll, we'll see if, if, if we can continue on this, on this path. I, I'm not saying I'm. A denier by any means because it um take locking and saying that hey you know i w- i was in on buying jalen hurts last year but i was saying hey you gotta get him get the fantasy points and get out of him and and yep. now in redraft this year he was a priority draft for me and he's really helping me out um and you know you saw some of it in the last season where they went from that run that run heavy team or the pass heavy team and it wasn't working out. They went kind of into that run heavy thing and then started mixing it up a little bit, got into the playoffs, got bounced. Hertz wasn't great. Um, and now this season he goes into the off season. He gets with Chris, uh, Quincy Avery, who is a phenomenal QB coach, uh, works in the off season with him in Southern California. Um, he works with some of the bigger guys kind of in the Jordan Palmer mode of things. Uh, but you know, so he goes out there and, and the one thing about Hertz that, that will never ever be disputed is the work ethic and, and, mm-hmm. uh, but you know, accuracy is one of those things that, you know, it, it can be a little fleeting and that was really the biggest thing. And then can, can, instead of one read and go and only play in a half of the field, can we see the whole field? Not, not always just be one reading and going, there's maybe still a little bit more going than you'd like to see, um, uh, with him, but the accuracy has improved tenfold. Uh, the ability to, um, you know, run a full offense instead of just being, you know, in this mold of hey, let's protect everything, let's run the ball, um, and 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 you know, win win that way. I'm, I win however you need to win. Uh, but I agree. I like the fact that there's 30, 36 attempts now, and it's it is basically funneled to the three guys. Miles Sanders is getting run. Jalen Hurts getting run. Fantasy wise, you don't like how aggressive he is running, like as far as with the physicality, but he's built really solid. Those legs are serious. Um, so as a fantasy up. prospect right now, going into a, a, a ranking scenario, you got to have him top five. There's not that many guys that you want ahead of him, regardless if you think he's on the level of the playing the quarterback position to some of those other guys above him, the Mahomes, the Josh, it doesn't really matter. He's putting up the points and he's he's winning football games, um, and I think he is working towards getting on those guys level. Those guys just do those crazy things that everybody gets super excited about, where you haven't had those things with with Hertz yet to really maybe vault him up into that category with those guys. It's it still does seem like it's a little bit of wait and see, but we're what we're seeing is very promising. Um, he looks great. Uh, you know, this is this should be not drafting the quarterback in the second round when you already have one being the model, but the model for teams that draft guys like Jalen hurts, who, you know, he's been to Alabama, went to Oklahoma. He's a winner. He'll work. Um, you know, instead of just saying, this is the system that we're running. I thought Sirianni did a great job of adjusting to that last year. We're struggling in the past. 
Let's go to the run. It's working. We won games. Now, hey, off season. Hey, we got an opportunity to add AJ Brown. Let's do that. We're going to get rid of Ertz. We'll, we'll go Goddard. Um, you know, the offensive line is good, which obviously that's something that is huge for a young quarterback. Um, the defense is, is usually pretty solid. Uh, so the fact that you're not just jamming, this is the system that we run and this is what we're doing. And you try to insert Jalen Hurts into that. Whereas it seems like over the last year and a half, they've done a really good job of building this whole thing together as a unit, doing what it takes to work, build confidence. Um, so all of those things are really, to me, really trending in the right direction uh, for Jalen Hurts and this Eagles team. Uh, so that's, that's, I guess, kind of where where I stand on, on Jalen. That's what's up. And, and <laughs> I don't, uh, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I don't even want to say this because I don't want to be blamed for speaking this into existence or anything like that. But the y'all remember, it wasn't that long ago when people were looking at, and I, I remember this, I have receipts. I, I, I remember this when people were looking at Carson receipts. Rent, uh, no, that's not me. Oh. Um, me G G Gabe and I, Gabe and I, obviously, we we did some bits about that on the open bar, clowning about like, kind of about receipts. But no, that's not me. Uh, the y'all y'all remember when Carson Wentz was challenging Aaron Rodgers as fantasy QB one? Yeah, right? like that was a real thing. Like I, I don't remember what specific year it was, but I remember the the articles. I remember the conversations like and and that's, that's why i said i i just wanted like if y'all could provide any reason like all right hey j mike chill out like you're you're too hype you're too excited because obviously and again i'm not saying that he's wince or anything like that or that he's gonna fold it's just that we can be really excited about these guys we were really excited about players when they when they show up early and, and they make it happen and they they start fixing issues and obviously, being in on Josh Allen early in his turnaround proved really well. Obviously, the same for Herbert in terms of taking another step forward after his rookie season. And I feel like the list goes on of guys that you can be excited about thereafter. So uh, I'm excited for Hurts. I'm excited for his prospects. I'm excited for uh, what he's showing. And I and I and I just want him. I want him on all my teams. So <laughs> I really uh, yeah, J Mike. I don't, I don't think. I mean, in my opinion, I don't think you're incorrect. I don't think this is. A Carson Wentz type situation he definitely doesn't seem like that type of player and then when you look at you just look at this rushing look at the rushing attempts right 17 11 9 16 15 the rushing yards Healthy. the rushing touchdowns <laughs> are through the roof you always knew that was going to be the case and the rushing quarterback is going to be amazing in fantasy football whether that's dynasty or fantasy football when you're talking about dynasty though you were concerned about him being the long-term answer and then now you look at at you know, I don't. Have, this 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 uh, graphic doesn't have completion percentage, but it can't be that bad. And the and the yards are pretty damn good. The touchdowns are a little bit down from week to week. Uh, there is a ceiling there, but also a floor. But then the rushing attempts curb that. And so when you have a guy that's rushing like that and capable of throwing the ball, you know, as well as he is, and also winning NFL football games, they can't move off of him next year and so if he's gonna be a perennial starter and have this type of rushing production it's money in the bank like mm -hmm. and if something happens something crazy happens and all of a sudden he's just not good anymore like it shit happens you know but you can't foresee that from coming i don't think if anybody, right if I mean, anybody can turn on somebody it's philly if he's, philly. If he's got a bad <laughs> eight screams down but the even stretch, if even then. if it's not in philly Sure, somebody's going to give him. He's a starter next. He's a starter in the NFL for yeah years I, to come. He's he's presumably the guy in Philly most likely, and and I, I I think hats off to what they've done as an organization. And 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 you know there was a minute there where it did seem like uh, there's no way he didn't hear the fact that like the owners, GMs basically saying we we want we want a guy at this level, and you know we'll see if Hertz can get there. But you know we're we're basically loading up on all these picks to. Basically, you know, maybe he we'll see what we got here, but we're we're going to try to get the Mahomes uh, of the world, and and you know you might have curated yourself one here, and I think uh, something that's just really important in, in all this is that is is you get into the right situation, into the right uh, ecosystem, into the right um, 
you know, and the and the right human being who wants to work and wants to get better. And the, the situation is saying, hey, you know, we're going to build around you. We're going to put you in positions to win. And I think just too many times that's that's overlooked in in a player, whether he works out or doesn't work out is is being provided. The You know, I mean, right now we're not that Daniel Jones is necessarily lighting anything up, but he's he's putting together some stuff on the ground. He got a little banged up, you know the ecosystem has been kind of trash. Um, and now all of a yeah. sudden you got somebody who's turning it around and you could, you could maybe get yourself, you know, a little Ryan Tannehill light over here with, with Daniel Jones. And maybe somebody was listening to the green light podcast. I did not have not listened to the green light podcast. Talk about that. They talked about that this week about how are the giants, the new Titans. I mean, yeah, obviously if easy comparison, cause they just muddy up every game, figure out a way to yeah. win. And then Dayball, they got the third highest cap moving forward next year. Yeah. Dayball's going to be able to go out and do what he wants. Yeah. Um, and really build this well, thing. I, I think the biggest thing just to go ahead. just touch on Jones real quick is that his turnovers are down. This right. Year. His turnovers have gone have down, down year over year. Right. He's down to half a turnover a game. So, but look what happens when you're in a carefully curated ecosystem that they went in and, and Dayball said, Hey, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. This is how we're going to yep. protect him. These are the plays yeah. we're going to run. They're out there running around with David Sills and fucking Richie <laughs> James and <laughs> Kenny Galladay. Right. And, and winning ball games and, and it just how quickly, and that thing could go sideways too. You know, all, you know, they could be, but I don't think anybody's going to, you know, be too Lotta worried about leash. what Dayball a leash over there for Brian Dayball is doing, and just uh, again, I, I think you know Dayball's going to get a lot of coaches fired. Um, <laughs> Facts, you know, uh, but anyway, I don't want to stretch this thing out too much and get get down that whole rabbit hole. But you know, we 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 thought we were out on Daniel Jones. Everybody was pretty much out. And now there's a couple of yeah, but I don't know. I mean. They could bring him back for a little cheap on a sh- maybe get something here and maybe, maybe I squint hard something. enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's turning you know a hundred dimes into a dollar. A <laughs> hundred dimes. It's like $100. it's impressive. Yeah. It's impressive. Ten, ten, ten dollars. Yeah. yeah, I was yeah. referencing Big Co from. Monday night stream where he didn't yeah. want he didn't want he didn't want four quarters he didn't for want a dollar four quarters for a dollar he wanted mm-hmm. it he wanted a dollar. Danny Dimes, I get it, I get it. All right, let's get out of here. Let's yeah. wrap. Up. Any oh, Matt? Do you got any? You want to? Uh, oh, I can say something now. Well, I, I didn't. Jason clearly didn't want you to talk earlier, so I didn't know if you, your band was up. But no, I mean the only thing here. Here's what I'm gonna say: is if I can, I, if I can play the other side here. Yeah. Like, am I gonna Please. like what I consider moving Hurts? If I can get like a Deshaun Watson and a first kind of thing. If I can get a Dak and a first plus. If I can Not get, doing that. if I can, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, Sean, I'm just talking one. out loud. I'm just yeah, talking yeah. out loud here. If I can get Kyler, uh, look, what, say what you want about Kyler. That's fine. What, whatever you want. He still puts up fantasy points. Correct. If you can get Kyler on a first, if you can get maybe, maybe, maybe the Burrow owner is a little scared off. Maybe, you know what I mean? Maybe I don't think the Lamar Jackson owner is worrying too much, but if you can get, if you can get a guy plus a first, it might not be a bad time to cash out here, especially with him running the ball as much as he is. I mean, the chances of him getting dinged up are higher than probably most quarterbacks in the league. So he's a thick boy, but um, <laughs> I think that it may not be the worst time to cash out. And if you have a couple different locations, it may be not the wrong time to divest a couple of those shares. And I think, especially with the Deshaun thing, we have no idea what that's going to look like. I think, I think that's the biggest leap of faith there. Is if, hey, we don't know what Deshaun's going to look like. I mean, there was like four snaps in the preseason that didn't look very good. Yeah, it didn't. But I mean, I mean, how much can you grab yeah, four that snaps? That was a joke. Well, yeah. mostly. No, I got you. It was but, true, but I mean, you went to Clemson, so try not to say anything bad. Um, <laughs> um, I have to. How let about people, Gino, How about Gino I have to Smith, let people talk you, shit about Deshaun Watson? Would you trade? Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Papa Gino's cooking though. So. He is cooking. He uh, is cooking. J Mike, last last rebuttal to to Foreman here. Do you agree? Disagree? What do you think about that? I don't, I don't know that I have a rule, but I think that the closer, just on even on Deshaun Watson, the closer that we get to Watson, like I feel like the less attainable he'll become. Yeah, for sure. Uh, in, in a lot of instances, or at least the price goes up. Maybe not less attainable, but the price continues to go up because like oh, we have to see him on the field. Brissett's actually looking competent with this group and you will have to put Watson in this thing. Like I think people get excited, but to, to your point, uh, I don't think I mind the cash out, but I, but I do think that 
you have to be you have to be very very particular it, it's not just like a Kirk Cousins in first. Mm-hmm. Yes, and I know for that sure. You didn't, I, don't, I know you didn't say that. I yes. know you didn't say that. I'm, but he did just, say I'm Dak in a through. first, so that's basically. I said like Dak in a first plus. That's basically Kirk Cousins <laughs> in a first. Right, so, <laughs> so, so if it is, what? so if it is Dak, Dak in a mid first, like, do you really feel good about that return? We know what Dak's been. Hey, is Dak gonna get get back to that? Is he gonna get back to the running? This is this was supposed to be the first full season after his leg was healed. I'm just saying. You, you, I think you have to be if you are, if you have hurts and you do want to cash out, you've got to be very picky of how you do it. And I think you 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 may want to be super creative as to how you attack that. Yes, if, and if that's and, right. And if I'm moving yeah. hurts, I'm getting I'm getting a quarterback back. I'm not just. I don't think I can move hurts for three firsts. I think that would. I think that's. I don't that, think that I would, would be in the super in flex super flex setup. though. You could yeah. get it. You know. You yeah. No. Find I'm, your boy I'm saying, but or move up to get a top. Yeah, but this, but, but class, I'd rather but just have you. Hurts than just having three. Sure. I'm all for getting the great player instead of the potentially yeah. great player. Um, I don't think I would trade a, a mid-first and Dak to get Jalen Hurts, but I don't think I would trade Jalen Hurts for Dak and a mid-first. Yeah. I don't know how to – that doesn't make any sense in my head. I'm trying to look at it from both sides of the trade, and I don't think I'm – if I have Hurts, I'm just holding him. And if I have Dak, I don't want to yeah. give up that much to go get Jalen Hurts. Although, unless, unless you're I guess getting, that's not the worst move. I guess I give up Dak in the mid first to go get fucking Jalen Hurts. Unless you're getting Mahomes or or Josh Allen or I mean Herbert rather, those are the only two non-rushing quarterbacks that I'm trading Jalen Hurts Jalen for. Hurts for. I, if I'm trading him, I want somebody else who runs. So because it's just you well, that's just, why that's why I mentioned. The Dak, I mentioned Deshaun, right. I mentioned Kyler. Yeah, I don't. I, I would take Dak out of that conversation for me personally because we just, we it was there, and then it, after the ankle, it hasn't been there, and we thought it was maybe it'll come back, but it hasn't been. Deshaun is up in the air. There could still be a little rushing in there. It doesn't need to be where it once maybe was, but if we could just get the Aaron Rodgers kind of rushing where he yeah. extends drives, gets forty and in the red yards. zone. Mahomes is kind of in that down. range too. He'll he'll get you. 30, 40 yards rushing in a game. Um, but you got the right now, it's it's the rushing quarterback, man. You got to have a rushing quarterback on your team to really have the difference maker at quarterback. Maybe you maybe, maybe turn that mid first into an Anthony Richardson who could be in that next yeah. mold of the running quarterbacks. So, I mean, yeah. or the Will Levis or the Bryce. Bryce Young. Or I tell you, CJ I'm getting Stroud. less and less excited about these quarterbacks as the weeks go on in college football. <laughs> yeah. It seems like a lot of projects. If it's not Jaylen if it's Hurts not Bryce or CJ, All right? Yeah, Jalen Hurts mm-hmm. was a project. That's very fair. But again, he went, he got incubated in the right scenario and situation. Agreed. Um, you know, so and produced like crazy, right? Like, if, if where's the production for those guys? Not named CJ Stroud and, and Bryce Young. Anthony Richardson class. obviously has the tools, but is he going to go to the place who's going to carefully yeah. curate the offense around? You know, the Ravens did a good job around Lamar, besides just trying to force what they do down, and you know. Greg Roman can get a little stale as things went, but I mean, for a while he was doing good things with, with, um, with Lamar there. And, you know, so that's really the big thing for me. I mean, Josh Allen is a perfect example. I mean, there's, there's teams that he would have went to where he is not the Josh Allen that we know and love right now. Um, so yeah. Jay, Mike, real quick, real quick, 30 second synopsis here. What, What has been your take about Levis as a, as a, as a big blue nation guy? Man, uh, I, I mean, we saw we saw Saturday night. That was a completely different team. N- no question. Uh, and and I, I had the privilege of being able to go with a couple of my buddies down to Mississippi. We watched them play Ole Miss at Ole Miss uh, a couple weeks ago. And I, I will say this: uh, Levis is better than he was last season. <laughs> Levis. Um, is a better decision maker than he was last season. Levis is willingly pushing the ball down the field and not putting the ball in harm's way deep. Intermediate to short, it's a question mark sometimes. But, uh, and, and the Kentucky offensive line's not great this year, which it feels like over the last handful of years, like they've just been really good consistently. Levis has impressed me. He's I still don't think he's a first-round quarterback. And well, I he's Mel Piper's one-on-one. 
No, I, I, I think I think Kuiper's drunk uh, or strung out on acid. Too, much, too, too much pumpkin pie. Too much mayonnaise uh, in the coffee. Yes. So I, I'm sorry, it went longer than 30 seconds, but I, I think Levis is better than he was last year. I don't think he's a first round quarterback. I do think that he could. I think that he could be developed into something really interesting. Um, like a but, jo- but, like a like a Josh Allen light kind of thing. Um, I, th- I think that might be a hyperbole. Maybe a little but... more like Jalen Hurts. Yeah, like 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 a poor man's Jalen Hurts. Yeah. Or, maybe not or poor. like maybe or just like, like or a, a better medium. Daniel Jones, maybe even. I, I think I think situation's going to make so much. Sure, like, situation's going to yeah, be gonna, so it's much. So key with all these guys. I was just I just wanted your but, opinion on that as a guy who's watching these Kentucky games game in game out. Yeah, he's 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 he's, he's been better than he was last year for sure. Uh, I'm I'm. I'm 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 not over the moon or crazy about it, but he he's been better. I'll just leave it. I'll leave it there. Okay. I, I heard McShay and Rosillo talk about some of these quarterbacks a couple, two weeks ago, maybe, and he was talking about Levis, and he said that the thing with Levis that is going to make him a first round pick is that the interview and like the charisma and the leadership in that locker room when he gets into those rooms with those with those NFL teams. It's yep. going to be undeniable that that they're gonna they're they're gonna be probably you know not not have the Kenny Pickett this year where they all waited because they didn't think maybe the talent was quite there. I think right. he was kind of saying that the the moxie and the and the 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 interview skills and the likability and what he does in the locker room is is you know undeniable. So that, even with the mayonnaise and the coffee and the banana eating <laughs> no peeled, yeah, he's a dude. He uh, he is a dude, and and when he does tuck it to run. Um, he, he's, he, he does, he does a decent job of making people miss, but he's also making secondaries look real bad running through cats. Yeah. Boy, boy, and again, up. It, it, yeah. He, he's a, he's a big, strong boy. That's the only he's part of him. Leader. I saw that's the only part of him I got, I got to see because <laughs> fucking Kurt Shiraka is a moron. Yeah. So we'll see. The, we'll uh, see. they were saying maybe Rosillo doesn't like his quarterbacks or, uh, McShay doesn't like his quarterbacks too small. So might be a little too, sw- too small. <laughs> A little too tight. Um, yeah, a little, t- little Tebow. A little Tebow-esque. Yeah. A little too... Uh, Is he toit like a toiga? Yeah. Toit like a toiga. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you coming in, hanging out with the Golden Girls over here. Um, we will, we will, where, where, where can we find you? One more last plug on the way out. Listen, th- thank, thank you guys for being a friend, you know? Uh, <laughs> traveling down the road and back again. I'm just... Uh, That's right. There your heart's go. true and... You're a pal and a confidant. So. Yeah. <laughs> Way to bring it home. Uh, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on Twitter at jmikecheck, uh, the open bar podcast with my main man, Gabe Gearing, um, the Dynasty Dummies podcast with my main man, Zach Reed, I'm Dummy Blitz. Shout out to my guys at the BFPN Network, the only network in town, including one Matt Foreman, uh, one third of this beautiful tripod. Uh, so yeah, I, I, again, I, grateful to be with you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad we can kick it again. Uh, hopefully, we can do it again soon in, in, yeah. in a few weeks or so, or whatever Let's that looks like. But uh, I, I am always, I'm always grateful to do it. If you're down every three or four weeks, it's come on. I'm, I'm around. I'm around. Uh, work. Fill it up again. So good when it hits your lips. <laughs> all right, buddy. Appreciate you. Yeah, uh, you know all the typical shit for the end of the show. <laughs> Let me get a subscribe button on the YouTubes. Send me a five-star review. Send me a DM on Twitter. You know, send me a DM on Instagram. I'm not getting on Facebook. Fuck Facebook. Um, But, you know, send me a screenshot. Zuckerberg just flagged you for sure. Yeah. Uh, Send me a screenshot of a five-star review. Enter you in a contest to win this T-shirt. I promise I'll pick a fucking winner next week and maybe do like a, maybe pick two winners. Whoa. Yeah. Um, Whoa. Appreciate y'all for joining us. If you want to support the team, you know, just go. You can go buy a T-shirt at RevelryBrewingCo.com and definitely go over to patreoncom slash Dynasty. Five dollar holla, get access to the Discord channel, chat it up. It's a good time. Some point, more content. We, we throw extra content every once in a while, but pretty soon here we're gonna be like extra show. Wait, at some point we're getting there. We're we can do back a little there. goal. Maybe we get Casey off on Mondays. We reach a goal, something like that. Mondays. Just have, have Casey doing nothing but fantasy research all day on Monday after the game. Anyway, appreciate y'all so much for joining us. Jay Mike, it's always a pleasure, man. We definitely got to get you back on ASAP Rocky. All right, everyone, we're out of here. Peace.